What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you'll be learning how to make a tic-tac-toe AI using Scratch 3. Let's get coding. Just finished coding. The first thing I want to do is, before I even teach you to code, I want to show you a preview of what you will be able to accomplish at the end of this series. So I'm going to hit the green flag right here and press the A key. And now you can see this board pops up and now the player can actually battle against the AI. And as you can see, the AI makes pretty smart moves and believe me, this hasn't been hard coded and the player can only draw the game. The player can never win. So with that, let's actually get into the code. First thing you want to do is to head up and open up any scratch editor of your choice. For this, I'm going to be using the Scratch 3 desktop application, but feel free to use any editor that you want. Um, if you are more comfortable with the web app or the uh, Scratch 2 editor, please go ahead and do so. Everything that can be done on Scratch 3 for this project can be done on those editors as well. So feel free to use those as well. So in case you are using the same editor, you will be able to follow a few cosmetic steps that I'm going to be doing, like deleting the cat sprite, for instance, or using this dustbin icon. But um, as long as you do know how to do, you know, those basic things, you could use any editor um, that you want and you're good to go. So first delete your cat sprite and there we are. So the next thing we want to do is to actually import our, our tic-tac-toe um, square and for uh, for that uh, i'm going to be actually uploading a costume that i made myself and if you want to use the exact same costume with the same dimensions you can download the file uh, link in the description below so head over to my google drive file and download it i'm going to just upload a, uh, upload the sprite so once you have actually downloaded it uh, you should have you know this windows thing pop up right here the libraries and you might not see mine uh, that's because of a few limitations with my screen recorder but uh, what you want to do is to just navigate to wherever you um, wherever you saved your uh, particular file and just double click on that. So you should have your square pop up right now, just like this. So there we are. The next thing you want to do is to head over to the costumes of the um, square. And uh, before that, actually rename your sprite as one. Okay. Uh, and I know this may seem odd, like why would we name a sprite one? But you will understand why I'm doing this in a few minutes. The next thing you want to do is to duplicate this once and I'm going to call this uh, X. Okay. And what you want to do inside this um, square is to um, click on text and then choose a bright red color of your choice. So I'm going with a uh, color zero, but saturation and brightness hundred. And I'm going to type in an X right there. Now you can enlarge this X by clicking on it and then dragging the icon and you should have a pretty neat um, X drawn right there. So I'm gonna put it right in the center. And I know this uh, may seem a bit you know, odd for the X. The X actually isn't centralized pretty well, but uh, you could just move that around a little bit and you should have a pretty neat X like what I'm having right now. I'm actually gonna make it a bit smaller, uh, but feel free to do uh, as you wish here. This is completely up to you. So I think this is what I'm gonna leave my X as. And now duplicate the X and now you wanna name it O. And within that, you just want to double click that and change it to O. And you want to also fill in with a different color. And I'm going to choose this blue color right here. Now, again, you can centralize this as you do want to, uh, as you want to. And uh, this should be pretty good for me. There we are. All right. Now head over to the code of the sprite. And here's what you need to do. So when the green flag is clicked, that's always your first line of code. Not always, but most of the time. I'm actually going to zoom in so that you guys can see better and I do hope this helps. So when the green flag is clicked, the first thing we want to do is to actually go to a particular position and uh, I'm just going to enter in some random position for now, but uh, we will change this um, a bit later. Okay, so just enter in something random for now. It doesn't really matter, but we will change this like I mentioned. But before this code, okay, uh, you can just uh, drag it down below and actually insert some lines uh, above it you actually want to make a couple of variables. Okay, the first one is going to be called X and I'll explain to you what these variables do. The second one's going to be called Y and the third one is going to be called square number. And I actually messed it up a bit right now. So uh, I'm just going to delete those two variables quickly and explain what I did wrong because this is a very, very common mistake. So when you're actually making these three particular variables, what you want to do is to check this box which says for this sprite only. And this is really, really important. 
So first uh, we do x, then we do y. And uh, last, we want to set up another variable called square number. So square, I'm just going to call it square no. And I, I hope this is enough. There we are. So all these things are just set for this particular sprite. And the way you can test that is by just, um, you know, just saying paint a new sprite and actually not paint anything. Just go to the code. And when you go to the variables category, you wouldn't see any variables pop up inside on uh, this. And that's because these variables are just limited to this particular uh, square sprite. There we are. All right, so first you wanna say set uh, and you wanna duplicate that uh, two more times. And you wanna set X to be equals to one. You wanna set Y to be equals to one. And then you wanna set square number also to be equals to one. And let me now explain what these three values actually hold. So our X value is actually going to be um, kind of like a graph grid, okay? So we're going to have um, three squares. Uh, we're going to have a three by three a grid of squares. Uh, and the first square right at the top is going to be X1, Y1. The second one uh, to the right of that, that's going to be X2, Y1. The third one's going to be X3, uh, Y1. And below that, we're going to, uh, below this particular sprite, we're going to have, um, x1 y2 and uh, right below that one we're gonna have uh, x1 y3 i'll um basically just be using the graph format and you can just imagine that we're starting you know right at the tip of the axis and we're actually going below so i do hope you understand what i'm trying to say all right with that out of the way uh, once you've named these three variables you're pretty good to go to the next step and the next step is to actually have a message initialized so you, so you have when the sprite is clicked okay not a message, but an event. And when the sprite is actually clicked, what you want to do is to have an if statement right here. And you want to head back to variables and actually declare a variable for ju uh, just for putting that inside the if statement right there. So I'm going to set this variable called win. And here we actually want to set it to all sprites, okay? So first we are going to, uh, actually we'll set win a bit later on, okay? So just grab an equals to from the operator and then what you want to do is to say uh, if win is equals to false. And win is um, going to keep track of if the game is over or not. So if the game is over, then win is actually going to be set uh, to be equals to true. And if it's not over, win is going to be set to be equals to false. So if win is equals to false, then we need another if statement and we're going to nest it inside. And you may think we could just use an and and to answer that, yeah, we can, but this is a, this is kind of a neater format. And uh, this is generally the convention that people use for a bigger condition encompassing a smaller condition. Okay. But within this, if we're actually going to have an and, okay. And uh, within that and we are going to have another variable set up called uh, inside. And uh, just like the other variable, we want to set inside to be for this sprite only. And this is again, very, very important. If you mess this up, you're gonna have very, very weird and um, kind of unfixable bugs a little bit later on. So within this first and, what we wanna do is to say, if inside is equals to um, V, okay? So uh, the inside variable is actually gonna be holding what our square contains. So it, it's gonna have three possible values. The first value is gonna be an X, the second value is going to be an O and the third value is going to be a V. And you might realize that actually corresponds to our costumes. And I'm just going to remove that vacant from the um, square and I'm just going to have a V right there. And uh, that should be pretty much it. So what you uh, want to do is to say if um, inside is equals to V or and just duplicate this uh, right here, but we are going to change the variables. I'm going to set up another variable called turn. Uh, but now we're going to have for all sprites set up. So click on that and you want to change this to be turn. So if turn is equals to P and if you're wondering what the turn variable holds, it's basically whose turn it currently is. So if the player can make a move, then it's got to be his turn. And if he tries to make a move when it's not his turn, this uh, if block is actually going to uh, prevent that from happening. So I do hope you understood that. Now within this, we are going to have a bunch of, we're going to have a bit of code. Okay. So, um, we're first going to say switch costume to X. All right. So this is kind of obvious. We want to set, uh, switch the costume to the, uh, X costume. 
uh, initially and uh, that also reminds us to switch costume to V initially. So put that right on top when your green flag is clicked. So first we'll switch costume to X and uh, let's actually just test this before we move on. So hit the green flag and I'm just going to hide all these variables for the time being. There we are. So when I click this, it nothing really happens and that's kind of weird because uh, the reason nothing happens is uh, because we actually have not set up win and uh, we also have not um, initialized inside I believe so let's actually go ahead and do that right now so set inside to be equals to v and we also want to set turn to be equals to p but we'll actually do that in another place so just have this uh, set or uh, whatever thing block from the uh, variables category and you want to set turn to be equals to p but don't put it with your other blocks of code just double click that right now okay and you also want to uh, go ahead uh, to win and you just want to say win is false double click that and chuck that block into the dustbin um dustbin's basically just uh, where your code where you can pick up code from okay so now let's actually test this out so we click the green flag and as you can see a pretty neat x has actually popped up and that is pretty good um that's it we are going to be coding in this video if you've enjoyed this video please make sure you uh, like the video and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell that's it for this video folks thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one